Hey there friends, I'm Leo and today I have a lot of more exciting stuff to show to you uh, including a bunch of changes to the biomes and mostly it's going to be changes on the world generation and biomes but also there's something else that is really exciting that I added which is water. Now there is a body of water and you can swim so uh, I'm going to first just show a little bit of the uh, Wandering Wilds, which is the first biome you're going to be able to play in the game. And I already have the terrain set up in a way where the Wandering Wilds is always going to be the first biome you show up on. Uh, it's the center of the map, always. And as you move further from the center of the map, you are going to reach the other biomes, right? The idea with the Early Access is that we're going to have three biomes. So uh, I implemented the second one, but there's still a lot of other stuff that I want to implement, like other foliage types, the dungeons, of course, and also villages. Uh, I'm going to have villages on all of the three biomes, and I'm going to use different building assets that you will have access to. I'm going to use them uh, specifically for each biome so that it has this sort of different vibe to each village, right? Uh, one small thing that I did change is uh, these guys, they're not going to be so aggressive anymore. So they're not going to harass you all the time. I just changed some of the parameters on their uh, AI. So now they're going to be a little bit more chill. They're going to allow you to build and do whatever you want to do. And I will also rework on the way that these guys spawn. So um, the way that they spawn right now is very weird. Um, for some reason in my head I thought this was a good idea, but they will spawn always in a direction in front of you, right? But uh, they don't spawn in a procedural manner, so their positions are never going to be saved and loaded. And if you kill them, simply another one is going to spawn at the edge of the map. And that could work, I guess, if I increase the amount of enemies, but it wouldn't work in other senses, like what if I log out of the game right next to an enemy? The enemy should still be there, right? So we uh, gotta have save and load as well for these enemies. So uh, this is a new thing as well. It is the red cap mushroom. I still go, gotta do some other stuff, like the descriptions and the rotating texture for the mushroom. So I even flagged it as a not ready item. And you can see that the vegetation is a little bit more dense. I added a couple of different tree types, so there's some small ones now as well. And there's also this uh, really big tree here, which is like a red birch. So that's a different tree as well. I got inspiration from Fortnite. Um, also, now that I see the gigantic dragon in front of me, I expanded the play area by four times uh, kind of, uh, it was a little bit over four times, so now the playable area is much, much bigger. And I did this because I needed more space for the biomes, and I also needed to make the world feel bigger in general. Now, it felt way too small. If you started walking, you were able to reach the borders of the world real fast. Uh, but with this, it doesn't really feel like the dragon is that big, but Trust me, it is. If you get near that wall over there... Uh, in fact, I never did walk all the way over that wall, and I, I was walking in one direction for like 10 minutes or, so, or more, you know, uh, and sprinting as well. Because uh, I was having a problem with the foliage generating. It wasn't generating as fast as I was moving. But that seems to be fixed with some of the new changes that I've done. I'm not 100% sure that it's fixed, but uh, without further ado, here's the water. So, uh, I've done a lot of material changes as well to the terrain. And a couple of these material changes also have these layers, right? So we have the beach layer, kind of beach, you know, I just wanted a color that was a little bit more orangey. And then you see that when it gets to this, uh, to this waterline, I made the material go darker. And that was, uh, honestly, I'm not going to say that was intentional, it wasn't. Uh, it was a complete uh, happy accident, because I was wanting to just do some slope surface changing on the sand material. 
and when I saw it, I just just clicked with me, you know, because the sand or whatever is wet. Uh, and if you uh, <clears throat> pay, uh, pay attention to the sound that you hear, yes, I've done the sounds as well because I'm tired of half finishing stuff. So, for example, if I start shooting this awesome gun, you can see that, yeah, it doesn't do any noise ever because I didn't finish this thing. And I will finish it when the time comes, but uh, for now it's just a silent gun. But now I'm in the philosophy that I want to finish what I start, so if I start doing the water, I don't want to come back to it later, so I just want to finish it, right? So, uh, this water is from the plugin uh, Cartoon Water Shader, but there's some caveats. Um, originally, I wanted to use the plugin Fluid Flux, but honestly, it just... It was too much, you know, uh, it, it was very expensive, and honestly, it's not needed, you know, the new Zelda game has really goofy looking water, it's really basic, really basic. So then I thought, well, maybe I could do some water using some shaders that I already have, for example, from the cartoon water shader, and with that I could work on some particle effects to make it look like there is some sort of waves going on, but this is all particle work that I've done. So, uh, what I got from the plugin was this sh water shader, although I had to change how it works by a, a little bit, because it is not designed to be worked on a infinite procedural world type of situation. So I had to make my own sort of grid pattern to spawn the water blocks, and I treat them as chunks, like my foliage system. Uh, they're not dynamically generating around, uh, around the player as you move, but they will be after early access when the, there is actual, uh, actually a procedurally infinite generating world, right? So, uh, one cool little detail is if you enter the water, your character will get wet. This is a, a little element that I got from the Vertex painting plugin as well. Uh, I, uh, as I said, as I always say, I use a lot of plugins, but I always make them work for Spark Mods, you know what I'm saying? I'm not just going to, to put them on the game as uh, and just like hope that they work out. I always take what's best from these assets that I find and I bring them over to Spark Mods. So here you see the swimming animation. Uh, I did this, uh, this animation myself and this other one as well. So uh, I had gotten a uh, animation set for like a full-blown character swimming, uh, but honestly, it was just uh, weird. You know, it, it didn't feel like a dog swimming. So then I decided to do my own, just to to be a little bit more in line with my final vision. And someone commented on the video saying that I needed to do the the dog swimming in a dog-like fashion. And if you pay attention to the character now. Uh, the character does this little animation where it gets dry. So, uh, there is this waves system with particle effects that, that generate. All of these are particles. There is no actual deformation on the water mesh to be found here. And um, what I did on the system is basically I added a component to the player that is going to check all of the bones on the player, so the feet, the knees, uh, the pelvis, and it's going to track how much that bone traveled over time. And then it is going to, to have like a, a limit. If the bone travels 100 uh, units, it is going to spawn a wave particle. So this happens on both feet, on the knees, and on the pelvis. So this means that the character is going to dynamically produce waves using particles. So this has uh, this makes for a kind of convincing effect. Uh, of course, that if you start to pay too much attention to it, you kind of see that it is just particles. I also had some particles for the feet. And uh, what the hell is going on here? What happened here? Uh, what is going on? Uh, okay, weird bug. So, uh, I'm going to show you the, the next biome now that it is getting dark. So let's go there and check it out.
So uh, I kind of saw some trees. Well, I mean, there is one right there, but I think it is very far away, isn't it? Maybe there's one a little bit over here. Although I don't see any big trees anywhere. Uh, also, another thing that I want to add back in is the wings sounds, you know. I remember back uh, a little bit back on the, the patches for the game, I remember that we had this um, just like an ambient noise of machinery. Because, you know, if you have two gigantic fans like that, it should do some noise. So, yeah, it is getting dark. And I hope, yeah, we're walking towards the biome as well. And as you can see, we're walking for a little while and, and the biome is still, uh, the, the terrain still has a lot to go before we get to that point. Uh, you can still see some trees generating the distance and that's because I, I just don't know if there's anything that I can do about it. Because these trees are very, very huge. So it is kind of hard to, to conceal them when they're far away. Uh, also, another thing that I added that uh, is new is the uh, procedure, not, not procedural, but the dynamic fog around the character. And that is all a post-processing effect. Uh, and I did that because I thought it would be cheaper. And with that, I also used the plugin that I had in my library. I think it's called Fog Gradients. And it is very easy for you to change the fog that you use if you use that, that uh, plugin. So what I did is I linked fog gradients to ultra dynamic sky and that has made it so that um, I have this this fog around the, the camera. Um, but I don't really see any fog here. I'm talking about fog, but it is not activated. Yeah, I think there's a small bug and honestly, yeah, I think I just deactivated it to do something and I ended up uploading the new version on Steam without the fog. Hang on, guys. Okay, so I'm back and now there we go. That is the fog that I was trying to show you and that wasn't showing up. So uh, now that we have the fog to speak about, this fog changes color based on the time of the day. So if it is, uh, if, if the, the, the day is starting, it is going to be a different color. So like a, a kind of orangey kind of color, same as when the night is starting. So dawn and dusk. Um, and here is the new biome, guys. Uh, it is very uh, mountainous. I also did some changes to the topology of these of these biomes, right? So this, uh, the Wandering Wilds, is going to be a little bit less mountainous and it's going to have more water. And the second biome, the Bronze Grove, is going to be a lot more uh, uneven. So you can see here there's a lot of ups and downs and it is uh, a lot higher up and uh, it does have all of the different foliage types. These are all uh, new. I also got those from an asset, but but catch this. This was from like a, a tree asset, right? Well, I got everything from that. So I got the materials from that uh, from that uh, asset. And then I put that into my own system. So these trees I made from, from scratch, like the actual mesh. But I'm using the materials and the, the base stuff from that other guy. So I don't know if that makes me kind of scrappy or, or whatever, but I, I kind of use the best that I can from the plugins and I make it work for, for the game and you will see that as a theme. Uh, and also, you will be able to cut these down normally they are fully choppable with save and load working as far as i've tested only if there's some really weird bugs in which case you can help me by reporting it uh there's also flowers now because my dad was really insistent that uh, the the floor needs more gr uh, ground clutter so i added some flowers to it and also there's the mushrooms i think i already spoke about and uh, you might notice that the grass is a lot less dense. And that was because I had some limitations on the foliage spawning system. I think it was getting a little bit too much on the processing. Uh, and I, I didn't want to take the performance hit that the grass would cause. So my idea was to essentially make it so that 
the uh, the grass is a lot less dense, but it's going to cost a lot less to 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 draw. And uh, well, I feel like because of all of these extra things on the floor, so like these little grassy things, um, these like ferns, I think they're called, uh, some flowers. I think that kind of makes the floor very full, even if there's no uh, not much grass on it. Of course, I need to change the color of the terrain to be uh, correspondent with the, the actual foliage. Uh, we've been moving towards the dragon for a little while now, that I've been showing uh, everything to you guys. But I think maybe we're getting close, but honestly, I think not. I think we're still far away. Let's just check it out from this higher vantage point here. Yeah, so you see we have this big valley or like with a lot of water in it and then there's a huge forest of wandering wilds and way over there in the distance you can see a little bit of yellow there. That is the sand biome and there's nothing there yet and probably honestly I think it is just like a copy of the wandering wilds but it has a sand ground texture. And that is going to be a sand biome with mechanical scorpions and a lot of really cool stuff. So uh, that is going to be coming way in the future though. I'm not going to be implementing that one right now because it's more end game or end early access, right? And I think after we pass those trees there, maybe we're getting to a point where we are near the edge of the map. I think I'm going to keep walking for a little bit longer and I'm going to 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 show to you guys when we reach that so let's just keep moving oh uh just a, a quick thing if you press num lock the character walks uh by itself it's like world of warcraft you can just press it and leave it there so now i don't even have my hands on the keyboard but the character is still moving so uh, that is something that I always wanted to have in the game and uh, I never really have the time to, to do that. But with this, I really needed to move a lot. So I think it was kind of necessary. Is this guy coming at me? Really? Aren't you supposed to? Yeah, that's it, run away. Huh. Okay, I'm gonna keep moving. Oh, and uh, there's also a mechanic that I've made where uh, the boars, they... Uh, well, I, I had this issue with the game where my FPS would be at 10 and it would be nightmarish out of nowhere as soon as I increased the map size. And you know why that happened? Uh, nav mesh, basically. Uh, I had the, a very huge nav mesh that covered all of the surface in the game. And I have dynamic nav mesh generation because I need to, right? If my foliage spawns and gets deleted at runtime, I need the nav mesh to update, correct? So when you have a nav mesh that is that big, it was absolutely destroying my frames. So what I did then was I had this, I saw this video of a guy where he explained that one thing that you can do is you can uh, put the the nav mesh bounce volume just uh make it always get close to the player so every like one second you snap it to be with the player and then you run a function to update it and then you can have a dynamic nav mesh that is a lot less expensive than what i was doing before and it works in an infinite procedural world, essentially. As long as you have your character spawning near you, then they will always be walking. And that nav mesh that you have doesn't really need to be small. So what I do is I have navigation invokers, which makes the character uh, basically ask for an area that they can move and then the navigation is going to generate only around the character. So I use a combination of navigation invokers and the actual nav mesh that is always snapped close to the character. And that is what I meant when I said that the fog is a little bit orangey when it's, when it's almost uh, morning. 
Uh, you can see all of the trees under there. Like, I really gotta fix this bug. I think the... It is probably something on the material that I gotta fix. So, I had a friend that said that the... The, the fog is way overbearing and it's too strong, but honestly, I really like it. I think it makes the game a lot more atmospheric. You know, uh, before I always felt like the game was lacking something. Of course, that that is a little bit weird, right? All of that white. So, of course, there is some weirdness every now and then. But in general, like that area over there, I think is really freaking cool. And just how the distance areas really feel like they are a little bit far away and you can notice that we've been walking for for like half an hour and we still haven't reached the end of the map and honestly i think we'll only reach i don't know like a little there's still a little bit of time that we gotta keep moving forward until we reach it and you see that we don't see a lot of the wandering wilds biome anymore and we will probably start seeing the end game biome pretty soon the early access and end game biome pretty soon oh uh just a quick thing that i forgot to mention some trees are not choppable like this big guy here is not choppable these ones because they're a little bit too big to be chopped down and it would look really weird having like this gigantic thing being chopped down so i removed their ability to be chopped down but it is on purpose Maybe someday when I add the chainsaw back in, I still have the chainsaw for those that uh, binge watched my last videos. Okay, so we reached the sand biome and as I said, it is using the regular Wandering Wilds assets, but this is all going to be changed in the future. But you can see from the ground material that this is the sand biome. And uh, of course I'm going to work on a really cool shader and a lot of particle effects to really make it feel like it is a sandy environment but it is not the time right now so i'm probably going to leave it as as this for a little while maybe i will just remove the foliage from the wandering wilds to respawn on it and now that we're getting near the border i think we still have a little while to go i'm just gonna uh, skip a little bit ahead Oh, quick side note, I don't know if you guys noticed, but uh, when I uh, grabbed the materials from that asset pack, I essentially saw what makes them look pretty. So for example, you can see that this starts with a darker tone of, of uh, orange, and then it starts to become yellow. And there's also subsurface scattering illumination on these, uh, these trees. So their colors are probably a lot more vibrant, and I noticed that, I don't know if you guys also notice it. But I basically made my materials better, and I brought those textures to make the new trees. Yeah, as you can see, when we start getting uh, near the border, you can actually see the sheer size of the dragon now. It is just like huge, you know? Like that tail over there doesn't really seem like it is that big. But dude, it is really, really big. Because we are really far away from it and you don't really get that notion before you actually go there and uh, play it. And see, like, we still have a really big forest before we reach the end of the world. And I, I'm gonna reach the end. Uh, there's some boars dying right now. I think sometimes they just spawn under the floor. So what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna get to that mountain and uh, we're going to check the materials. So I'm also going to show something new. If I just jump here, there is an animation, uh, depending of this, uh, on the speed that the character starts swimming, there is a little animation that plays. And this animation uh, 
basically just have the, has the character going down and uh, I block the movement. Then after a little bit of time I put the movement back in. Now let's start running. And here we are, the edge of the world. I will uh, apply a different material to this guy afterwards uh, when we reach the point of doing the sand biome. And if you keep going, well, uh, this is actually a uh, wandering wilds because of the ground uh, material. But yeah, this is a rare wandering wilds at the edge of the earth. And there we go. Uh, this is uh, extremely high, and uh, I don't know if you would be able to do a house here or something like that, but I think that would be really cool. Okay, so now I'm going to hop into Unreal Engine, and I'm going to show you guys some other stuff that I've been working on, which I think are pretty damn cool. So uh, it's mostly related to water, and then I'm going to show you some of the stuff that I did for uh, my foliage plugin. Okay, so here we are on the engine. And here you can see kind of the, the size of the biomes. So uh, if I go to my root map, here we have the dragon and all of the terrain generating. So I'm going to show you some of the generation parameters that I have. So you can see that there is like a mandatory circular area around this uh, center point. This is the obligatory starter zone uh, area. Then you see another one right there, which is the obligatory just first and second biome areas. And then on the very edge, you see the sand biomes. Now, the way that I did these materials was also very cool. Uh, I'm working a lot with material functions. I think material functions are so freaking cool because uh, it basically avoids a lot of work. You don't have to do the same thing over and over again with uh, materials. So uh, basically what I did... Uh, this is my graph, if you guys uh, want to check it out. So I have the unplayable area here. Then I have the distance-based biome adjustment. This is the, the Voxel plugin, by the way. And I have... Uh, I followed a, a tutorial about biomes. It really isn't that complicated. And set it up uh, quickly, I think. So then, you know, have... Uh, all of the float curves and this basically dictates the uh, terrain generation uh, on the topology so this is the topology of the wandering wilds this is of the bronze grove and if you take a look at these numbers here you can see that the wandering wilds is way lower than the bronze grove right so the bronze grove goes all the way up here and then it has more ups and downs and the wandering wilds has a little bit more peaks every now and then but if I change these curve values, it's going to change how the world is generated, basically. So uh, another thing that I did for the materials that I was talking about is basically... Uh, well, let me just do a little bit of uh, some adjustments to this thing here. So uh, yeah, ignore this. This is a little bit, uh, this is a little bit weird. But I have this material function for the water caustics, which is this thing down here. So basically, if it is below zero a world position, it's going to start doing the caustic effect. And here is where the magic happens. So this is a voxel layer blend, and it happens with the, the voxel plugin. And in here, you can plug material attributes or just base color or anything that you want. And then you can plug into... Uh, your materials into it. So this is basically just a blend and it's going to blend based on the data that you insert in here. So this is where I add multi-indexes and these are translated over to material. Now the cool thing that I've done uh, that I'm really really happy with is I basically have these uh, materials. Just do this. Okay so uh, I basically you see how there is like a slope blending here, right? And uh, there's a lot of solutions for auto materials that blend based on the the st how the, the steepness, right, of the terrain. So um, I found a couple of posts about people doing their own implementations of this, and I turned that into a material uh, material function. 
So if I click on the Wandering Wilds, you guys will see that uh, I've done a height blending, which is going to blend based on the uh, world position. So this works perfectly well with the water. Then I also have like the slope blending. Uh, I have the, the mountains here. So wait up. Slope blend mountain materials. Uh, I think I just didn't rename this guy. Hang on. It was just a copy and paste issue. Uh, beach materials. And this is the happy accident, the slope, which looks like the sand is wet. And then the planes. So, uh, what I did is, basically I've made this material function here, which is kind of big. But it is a just a, a regular, a simple color. So, you see uh, this right here? This is a material function. I can feed the darker color and the lighter color. And there's also a macro texture variation. And this is what makes the biome not look all the same all the time. And it kind of adds a lot more variation to it. Another thing that I can do is I can take uh, an alpha channel. So this, uh, these metal scraps. What I did here is I basically have debris. And I have this mask. And what I did is I have this color. And then I did a displacement blend. And this is really freaking cool. So, for example, I have another example that is a little bit better and a little bit more involved that I did. So, uh, you see these uh, these rocks here, correct? Uh, another one. Okay, so you see that there are some rocks. They, they used to have parallax occlusion mapping, which made them look amazing, but... There, there has been some problems with parallax occlusion mapping uh, when you're playing. It just feels like the, the rocks are inside of the ground and it feels like the ground is made of glass. So the parallax occlusion mapping looks really cool in the editor. But when you're playing it, it doesn't look convincing at all. So I just removed it. I still have it for some stuff like the moss. You can very faintly see it, I think. Maybe not. So uh, what I did here is... Let me just remove a couple of things and I'm going to show you step by step. So, uh, I did a blend. So, this is the soil. So, this. Uh, the soil is under the, the stone, I mean. And then there is... Oh, wait. Hang on. I am on the wrong material. So, this is the material only for the Wandering Wilds. If I click on the Bronze Grove here... Then I open the bronze grove material, which is a little bit similar. I'm using the same functions, but there we go. So we have the grass surface, which is that, and then we have the stone. So if we just apply rock to grass, if I just connect this guy all the way over here, and I apply, you will see that the grass is going to have the, the stone applied to it. So the stone is just that right so uh this is the stone yeah so this is just a stone and you can see that uh, it is just a, a stone alpha texture but because of the macro blending variation you can see that there are some some darker spots that make it so that you can't really see the tiling which makes it really good for or landscapes. So if I mix those two materials, those two textures, or yeah, then we see uh, some grass with the rocks applied on top of it. And this is using a displacement blend where I just have a transition phase. And uh, basically, you know, this uh, texture here, it is going to take everywhere where it is a little bit gray and it's going to let the grass come through it and everywhere that is white is where the stones are going to show up and i can control the height of the grass in this stone right okay so after i applied the rock uh, the rock in uh, on top of the grass i apply moss to the rock so if i plug this guy in here then you will see that now we have some moss on top of the rock so this is like three different textures blending and i can 
I can do precise control over if I want the rocks to be a little bit above the grass or a little bit under. And uh, before when we had the parallax occlusion, it looks it looks a lot better. But uh, I will try to bring that into uh, in the future. But the problem with the voxel plugin is that it doesn't support a lot of textures. That is why I went with alpha textures and just simple colors. Because originally I was doing a lot of really complex materials and that was uh, not working. The terrain would not generate, right? So after we apply the moss to the rock, then we have a slope. So a mountain slope. It is going to uh, show a mountainous region if the slope is a little bit too steep. And if we apply this, uh, we also apply moss to the slope. And then if we apply the slope in here, and I apply and save. Then you see that we have this uh, slope of, uh, of a mountain. And I also use uh, distance blending to make it so that you can't really see a lot of repeating textures in the landscape. So we do have the, the slope blending of this mountainous region. Then where it is a little bit steep, we do the rocks. And now the last step of this main blending is to blend in the surface area. If I apply this, you will see that the surface area is going to become all regular. And then what I do is on my grass on WSS, I just set that I don't want the grass to spawn on, on the specific slope. So I basically put a limit to how much the grass can spawn. And then the grass will not spawn on these areas, for example. Uh, what I do afterwards is just do the, the beach area. So if we find uh, if we find something that is a little bit over to the ocean, there's probably somewhere that is on the ocean or on the, the water. Probably somewhere, I guess. Maybe not. Maybe if I just wait for the terrain to generate. Yeah, well, I mean... It seems like the height blending is already implemented, to be honest, but we gotta bring this guy over here. Apply and save, and then there we go. Full material. So now there is some sandy sort of... Uh, of uh, blending going on. Oh, there we go. Uh, no, we still are using the Wandering Wilds over here. Maybe I removed the ability of this biome to have water, but honestly, if I did, I'm going to to add it back in later. I think it is uh, the curves are not properly aligned to have water. Uh, if you build your house, just make sure you don't build it somewhere that is a little bit too down uh, on a valley or something, because uh, the problem with editing the topology of a map is that it is probably going to uh, kind of disturb your home. If you make your house somewhere, your house could be underwater or above the, the ground if the terrain changes. So, uh, another thing that I wanted to show you and I'm really happy about this is the uh, water test. So, I'm going to set this up and I will be back in just a second. Okay, so I want to start off by saying, uh, you know that when you are near a river, you hear the sound of the water coming from that river, right? And uh, it is a problem with game development because if the sound is coming from a huge area, we don't really have a way of doing that. There's no like area sound. Only if you do a, a point sound with a huge attenuation area. But... Uh, what happens if you have a infinite and procedural water under the floor? Because that's what it is, you know, it is like in Volheim where if you start digging too high or too low into the floor, you will find water. And that is because there is a huge plane of water under the floor at all times. So how do you have the sound working there? And that was a huge issue for me for a while and I, I remember that I didn't really know what to do 
And then it hit me that I could make a dynamic audio system that would basically detect where the water is coming from. And that is the red lines that you see around me. So they're going to be updating. Uh, this doesn't cost anything. Uh, it's very performance on that regard. But you see that now that we touch the water, this here is the sound. This is basically, picture this as the actual sound that is producing the water. So if we go there, you'll see that it detects a hit there, right? Now, here are the sounds that are going to come from the water when I get near it. I think you guys can hear that the water is producing sound based on where it is. And the way this works is it gets all of the locations that actually had a hit on a water and then it goes to the middle point of those hits. So basically goes to the middle of all of them. And the reason those are not hitting there is because the collision of the water is actually not protruding as much as I would like. But here you can see that it gets the middle points of all of these guys and just stays in the middle. Now, if I come over here and I start moving right around the lake, you can see that we start to hear the sounds coming dynamically around us. So you will hear the sound coming from the nearest source of water. And this is going to be happening all on the landscape. So with this, when you get near a water source, you will be able to hear it. And it's going to be coming from the actual direction that you are facing the water. Now, what happens if I have water all around me? So that I'm going to come over here, kind of. And there is some hits on the water back there. So if we start having those hits... The point is going to go over there. If we are in the middle of an area that has water all around it, this point is going to take the medium position of those areas and it's going to, to be right on top of you. Now, the exception to all of this is if you jump into the water. If I jump into the water, it is going to prioritize always being at my position. So if I am at the water, it's always going to stay at my position no matter what. But if I leave it, it's going to go back to focusing on whatever it was focusing before. Now, I think you guys noticed here that we have like a floating object. Now, this is a buoyancy component that I was working on. And basically what it does is, yeah, it's a little bit broken, but basically what it does is it takes four points around it and it calculates the rotation between those points and it makes the objects uh, the object bounce around and that is not the actual component that came with the, the plugin I kind of made my own solution to this because I wanted something that could be applied anywhere to any actor right it, it wouldn't need to be an actual specific actor type so I just made a solution into a component so it's a little bit easier to to handle but yeah that is the water system that I uh, honestly uh, with this patch, I was really happy and really proud of the water system, but now I think it just got overshadowed by biomes, to be honest. But I still really like the water system, don't get me wrong. But yeah, I mean, a part of this, there is also some new buildings. Um, at the very start of the patch, I, I almost forgot that I was doing some buildings. So I've made some, some log buildings, and you know how I said that the depending on the village that you are, you're going to see different types of buildings and you as the player is uh, you're going to have access to all of the building types right so i'm still honestly i'm still like 30 percent done with the building types there's going to be a lot more building types and this is another one of them and this i think you can guess it is going to be used on the uh on the bronze grove villages heavily right i'm going to make a very kind of like wilderness uh, woodlands kind of vibe to the village so there are these new wall blocks and there's also these logs that you can place and they kind of match really well with these 
And with this, you can kind of make your own wooden uh, wooden log house, right? So have these, and you can place it here. And with this, you can make a different vibe to some areas of your house. And apart from this, I didn't implement any new buildings, even though I wanted to do a lot more. You know, I have on my planning, I have weekly objectives and monthly objectives. It is how I am handling it right now, because I know what needs to be done for the game. I just need to organize what I need first, right? And I had a lot of uh, weekly objectives that I wanted to do, which was these buildings. But I ended up doing just what I felt was necessary right away to the project. And biomes are such a huge feature of the game that, for example, uh, I, I had to rewrite a lot of my foliage plugin. And that is why I took it out of the store. I don't want anyone to be buying that, expecting that they can have biomes like in Spark Marts, you know? Uh, when I first published this plugin, my intentions were to keep updating it. But the problem is the WSS Spark Marts version has a lot of the voxel implementations to work alongside it. And the more that I tangle the, the two plugins together, WSS and, and Voxel plugin, the harder it is for me to make a, a version that is agnostic to all of that and that you can just plug and play and use it. So I still need to figure out a way to add biomes in a way that is not, um, not dependent on the Voxel plugin. So that's why I took it out of the store. I don't want you to have the impression that, um, that you can do everything that that is on spark Mods. and there we go uh i'm sorry if your house got destroyed with the new patch but now you have some new areas to build your house on i hope and i won't be doing that many big terrain changes anymore these were the ones that were on my list for a little while and i just needed to work on them right away because uh the foliage is the more i worked on new foliages the more i knew i was going to need to come back later so this was just a process of doing something before I, uh, you know, when you do work and you know that you're going to have to go back to it later, that is not productive, right? So I would be wasting my time by implementing any new foliages. So that's why I chose to do the biomes right now, because it is a cornerstone of what makes spark mud stick. So I needed to get that done right away. And that is why I'm not going to be prioritizing too much uh, clothing and uh, and even buildings. I'm not going to be prioritizing it that much. Oh my god. This guy gets a lot louder when you get close to it. But yeah, okay. So, um, I'm going to be prioritizing things on Spark Muts that I know it needs to be done for the actual basis of the game. And those things include uh, villages, yes, roads a lot of of, of the car uh, of the cornerstones that i need to set up so mini map a world map uh i don't know maybe a compass instead of a mini map i still gotta play with those ideas but i'm going to be prioritizing those instead of adding more content and uh, i think that is more important right now is just to, to add everything the game needs and even if i have very simple villages to start with I think I need to get started on that before I uh, I do much more in the game. Because first, I, I need to know if it is feasible to do it the way that I want to, you know? That is the hardest part. Um, I have everything that I want to do in my head and honestly, in theory, it should work. All of the logic to procedurally generate a village using actually a random seed. So all of that has some grounds to work but it is going to be months of of, uh, of of work right so i'm getting ready to start on that so if i feel really inspired of course i'm not promising anything but on the next devlogs you will probably start seeing some stuff on that regard but yeah uh, i'm gonna stop rambling now and if you guys want to know anything in particular or want me to show something uh in particular then just let me know and if you want to join the discord community for spark Muts, we are a growing community on discord and there uh, if you join you can get keys every time a video goes out and if you're watching this video 
right as it went live, you will probably be able to grab a key. I'm going to be sending 10 keys on the on the chat. And uh, normally it's five, but uh, I'm going to send 10 because the last video got a lot of views. So I think there's a, a bunch of new people. So welcome to SparkMuts. And um, I hope you can get a key to play test the game for yourself. And let me know what you think of the game on the Discord. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. And I will see you guys on the next video. Oh my. My goodness. Oh dear. Ah! No! Ah!